Hello everybody, Silas back again today and it is not morning so I cannot say good morning but maybe you're watching this in the morning so I guess good morning. I've been busy crushing cars all day long, I've crushed a ton of cars today, I've bought a ton of cars today, bought a ton of catalytic converters, it's just been a super super busy day and I haven't recorded a single thing up till now. I'm kind of taking a break from filming crushing cars. I'm still gonna keep crushing cars, but I've just filmed so much of that lately that I'm kind of bored with it. But I still wanna film stuff for you guys, so what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna check out what's inside that building back there behind me. When we bought this property, there was no fence around it, and none of the cars outside, none of these out here were here. And the crusher wasn't here. None of this was here at that point in time. All this is stuff that we've added, and the fence over there we added, and at the time we bought this, there was a road. You can kind of see the remnants of it right here. And it kind of loops off that direction. And it loops up around the building. And then it comes back this way. And it loops around this way. And it went right back out over there somewhere. And the guy we bought the property from had a bunch of old cars stored in here and some old furniture. And first we bought all the cars inside it. And before we could get them out, he ended up selling us the property as well. So we've never actually gotten the cars out of there. We got a few of them out of there. There was a 67 Thunderbird that we took out and then there was a, uh, what else was in there? Oh, there's a 46 Ford car that we took out that I sold and there was a 62 or 3 Buick Special that we took out of there. So we took a few of them out but most of the cars that were in there are still sitting in there and it's kind of neat. So I haven't been in there in a while. I haven't really looked it over so I want to take you all in there with me. At the time we bought this building none of these trees were here either. All of these have grown since we bought this place. And we've owned this property now for, uh, let's see here, I was fresh out of high school, so about 15 years now we've owned this property. Well, I was actually in my senior years when I bought this. Yeah, about 15 years, 14 or 15. If I can get over here, these trees are getting thick. Ow, oh, right into my ear. Just stabbed myself through the ear with a tree limb. Ouch. Anyway, I can squeeze up here. I'll kind of show you the building a little bit first. This here's a loading dock and at the end of this dock they're gone now but there used to be a set of railroad tracks and actually they kind of ran off this direction this way and actually when we were putting in this fence that section right over there where we were putting in the fence post we kept hitting railroad ties underground from that old original railroad but that railroad ran right up here by this and this is the loading dock to load into the rail cars bunch of old cars back here sometime we'll take you back here show you all those but anyway they would bring stuff out of here and load it into rail cars or take it out of rail cars and this was kind of like a, a shipping hub of some sort back in the day a long 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 time ago probably at least 70 80 years ago but there's another door down there and that was one that could back trucks up to and then there's a couple more doors on the other side and that's actually the entrance is on the other side only one of the doors still opens so that's where we're gonna go in but it's just a pretty cool building. The problem with it is, the reason why we don't use it, is it's got really, really low rafters in it. This is the ramp to get up inside it right here. And I've got to unlock this door real quick, and then I'll take you around inside. And there we go. We're inside. I guess what I should do is open these doors all the way so I can get lots of light in here. Because there's no electricity on this thing, and it's dark in here. There we go. I guess it's all the further that one opens. We have all sorts of stuff in here. I honestly don't even know what's in this area here. I have no clue what's in that area. It's really hard telling. I've never really gone through any of this stuff here. But as you can see, these rafters are pretty low. I think they're eight foot rafters. And so if I came in here with a skid steer or something like that, it's just a matter of time before I bump into them and knock the whole building down on top of myself. So honestly, at some point in time, we'll probably either tear the building down or do something different with it but right now it's buried and it's not hurting anything where it's at so we just kind of let it stay but i want to take you around in here show you the cars show you through all this stuff so we'll see what we can find we'll save the cars for last we'll go around and see what we can find in this area first there's some cool old wheels down here those will make really good rollers looks like a 57 chevy fender that's pretty cool never realized that was in here a gumball machine. I am genuinely exploring this stuff for the first time with you guys. Been here for 15 years and I've never looked through this stuff. Oh, if I can squeeze back here without falling or breaking something. Looks like a bunch of just trash and scrap metal, honestly. Don't see much good in here unless there's something down underneath all this that's worth something. 
I really don't see much good in here on these shelves anyway it looks like just trash mainly whole bunch of beauty rings the thing about beauty rings though is they're really hard to identify what they're off of unless they're marked I'm gonna guess those are off of because of how wide they are maybe maybe Chevy rally wheels I'm just guessing I really don't know and I can't sell them without knowing for sure exactly what they go to so a lot of times beauty rings just wind up going in the garbage or not in the garbage but obviously in the scrap there's a bunch of old furniture in here it's pretty rough though it looks like it's definitely seen better days this piece might be fixable bunch more stuff an old crib it looks like let's see what's in the trunk is there anything good in the trunk what's your guess are we gonna find a million dollars that'd be pretty cool but I kinda doubt it we have a whatchamacallit I have no clue no clue what is it oh citizens band transceiver 23 channel crystal control huh that's kind of neat. oh it's a lafayette huh i don't know if that's worth anything or not i'll have to look that up real quick to see if that's worth anything well it's about a 50 dollar item so not a super high dollar item if i could guarantee it working it's about 125 150 dollars but without knowing anything about it they're selling for about 50 for parts units but other than that, looks like an old copy machine or fax machine here. And there's a cool wheel. Just one though. Those are really hard to sell unless you got a set. Oh, what's down there? Oh, an old uh, teapot style carburetor. That's off of mid 50s Ford or Lincoln. Something like that. Car. Those are kind of hard to find. That's a pretty good piece. If everything moves on it, those are worth quite a bit of money. I've sold a lot of those in the past for pretty good money. I don't have any right now, so right, I guess there's one right there. Let's see what else is in here. Looks like some more old raggedy furniture that's falling apart. Some CB units. I'll go through those. Usually CB units are junk unless they're very certain models. Looks like a record player. Another record player. A couple of radios. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything good in there. Real good anyway. Go in here and see. See, now when we used to come in here, we would always come in through this door. And then here was the flashlight so we could see around in here. But this door does not open anymore. And I'm sure that flashlight is long dead. I don't know what that is. There's a shelf. Other than that, don't see much in here. Remember something back there. What's that? I don't know what that is some piece of equipment oh there's an old dresser it looks like it's in pretty good shape huh the old furniture doesn't bring a lot of money but it does sell you can get 20 to 100 bucks out of most pieces unless it's something really cool then you can get more got an old desk definitely seen better days but you just never know if somebody's into that stuff they'll buy it here's an old dresser that one looks like it's in pretty good shape still so somebody will probably buy that what's on top of it what's this What is that? A Johnson Viking? I have no clue what this is. Oh, it's another old transmitter is what it is. I looked it up online real quick. I couldn't find one exactly like this. I don't know if this one's worth anything or not, but I'm sure to somebody it is. Probably another 50 or or $100 there. So that's kind of neat. A bunch of transmitter stuff in here. People are into that sort of stuff. I'm not, but some people are. Some more old furniture. Not in too bad a condition. It's all, all probably repairable. This is kind of an interesting piece here. There's no handles on it. It's got the little recessed handles back here. At first I thought maybe the handles were on this side, but no, this is the back. That's definitely the front. It's an interesting piece. That's all the furniture. Now let's check out the cars. This is probably my favorite car that's in here right now. It's this 1960 Thunderbird. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this car before. I took a picture of it one time put on there. But this is a very cool car. That's what they used to keep the door closed on this side over here back when it used to open still. This car is complete, but it's pretty rough. So we can see around inside it. There we go. Get that door open. These are just really cool cars. Neat looking dashes and steering wheels. Bucket seats. Got neat back seats in them. 
Check out that emblem. That's pretty cool. I like that. The worst part about these cars is this one doesn't really matter because it's not very rusty. But if the front clip's rusted out or something, that front clip does not come off. That is built as part of the car. The whole front clip and body is all one piece. The doors come off, the hood comes off, the trunk lid comes off, obviously the bumpers, but the rest of this body is all one unit. Kind of a crazy design. But you know, honestly, these birds really don't rust that bad. We've had quite a few of them through the years, and the quarter panels, like this one's rusted out above the wheel, those usually rust out. But the rest of the cars don't rust that bad, surprisingly. At least in this area. I'm sure up in the northeast they rust like crazy. Everything does up there. But this is probably the worst spot of the car. Is It's got a big old crunch right here from something. Something must have fallen on it at some point in time. But look how thick that dust is. That's how long it's been here. Oh, it's got a tag on it still. When was this car parked? This car was parked in 1971. It was on the road for about 10 years. And that was about typical for these old cars. They lasted on the road for about 10 years nowadays. If a car only lasted 10 years on the road, we'd be pretty upset with that brand. That'd be like a 2012 model breaking down, which we do crush 2012 model cars, but they're not that common. Back in these days, it was super common for a car to be done after 10 years. Next to it over here, we've got an old Plymouth. Let's see if we can get around to that car. I've never actually looked inside that car. I have no clue if there's anything in it or not. I always thought these are pretty cool cars, and you can usually find these in pretty good condition still, but they just have no value just because nobody really collects these. They do buy the noses off of them though. I've cut a few of these noses off. It's kind of a shame, but what do you do? I made it. Got a thick layer of dust on here. Oh, all that work and the door doesn't even open. We'll try the back door. There we go. Rat nest deluxe. This car must have been in a barn or something before it came here. Whew, it definitely smells like a barn find. Absolutely stinks in there. It looks like it's pretty well complete. I'm not sure what year this is. I'm guessing around a 51, 52, somewhere in that range. It's got a 1975 tag. So this car made it 20 years. Check out that Plymouth logo on the back. That's pretty cool. What's back here? I've never noticed anything back here. It looks like an old stove. That's just scrap metal there. But what's on top of it? Toy truck. What do we got here? A toy car of some sort. Fisher Price. Huh. That's kind of a neat piece. What else? There's more toys in here. Another old truck. These aren't super old, but they're kind of neat. Huh. Well, this is interesting. Somebody cut a hole in this trunk lid on this Thunderbird. I wonder if they I wonder if they did that so they could put a flag in there so they could drive it in parades or something like that. But the car wasn't that old when it got parked, so. I have no clue. What would the purpose of that be? It looks like it bottoms out right there. So I don't know what that would have been for. I don't know if this trunk opens or not. No, it's it's latched and there's no key. So I have no clue. What are your ideas? What do you think that was for? Next up on the list, this is probably honestly the nicest car in here, condition wise, is this old Hudson Custom Wasp. Pretty cool car. Kind of ugly, but so unique that it's kind of neat. The motor still turns on this one, and they parked it right where it's sitting. They actually drove this car in, as well as this Thunderbird. Both of these were parked right where they're sitting. The guy took this car out of here and washed it. I bet it would be super shiny still. It's got pretty good original paint. Looks like it's missing a few pieces of chrome off the rocker panels. Got a little bit of rust, but overall, it's not too bad, really. Got the old weather eye. Oh, I sold an instrument cluster just like that one time. Huh. And the weather eye system. I never knew what it came out of, but now I do. There's the old steering wheel. Check out that steering wheel. That's just so cool. That whole steering column is kind of neat. They put a lot of styling into this car. It's kind of interesting, it's got the split bench seat, so these fold forward, I don't know why they would fold forward, because it's a four door car, so you can get right in the back seat anyway, but it's kind of interesting. Of course, knowing Hudson, they were probably just too cheap to make a separate seat for the two door and the four door model, so they just made one. That's another interesting thing about these cars, is they got aluminum door frames on top. That was a common Hudson thing. Check out the styling on these door handles. You just don't see stuff like that anymore. 
definitely a very cool car. Got the Wasp logo on there. Even got the original jack in it. An old string wheel out of something. I don't know what that's out of. That car there, what we're probably gonna do with it when I get more time is we're just gonna go ahead and drag it out of here, wash it up. That'll make a really cool video, I think. Next up on the list is this old Thunderbird. Now, I don't remember which year this car is. Uh, the taillights don't go all the way across, so this is gonna be a 64, maybe a 65. I'm not entirely sure on the year of this one. It's got a 390 in it. Well, door doesn't want to open. I know it used to open. So this car is not in too bad a condition. It's got a little bit of rust back there in the rocker panels. It's got a healthy layer of dust on it. But yeah, look at this car. It's got a little bit of rust down here, but still it's a survivor car. Let's see if we can get this door open real quick. There we go. Yeah, it's got all the original interior in it. I love the dash in these things. So cool. Check out the back seat in this thing, how it wraps around. I love these wraparound back seats in these cars. Those used to be worth a lot, a lot, a lot of money, but they really, really cooled down in value over the years. Somebody cut some holes and put some speakers in it, but that's okay. And I'm sorry if you hear that really loud noise out there. My neighbor out there has a bunch of old antique equipment and he loves to floor it everywhere he goes. So it's constantly loud out here. Whew, finally he quit driving that thing. It was just back and forth and back and forth and back and forth up and down the road. He must be working on it again. Just, just blowing my eardrums out that thing so loud. It, none of his stuff has mufflers on it. <laughs> and he drives a wide open throttle. But anyway, back to the tour of what all's in here. Whole bunch of just trash all over the place down here. Looks like there's a grill. I think that grill's out of this car here. Another old Plymouth. Squeeze over here. This one's got the visor on it. That visor is probably worth more than the whole rest of the car put together. Here's all the rest of the, the front end here. Oh, this is a two-door here. Some old gauges out of something. I wonder if those are out of one of these cars. They look like they're about the same as what's in this car, so that's probably what they're out of. Looks like a bumper and another grill. So yeah, that's probably extra parts for this car. This car, somebody might accidentally want it, but man, it just even the two doors of these just don't sell very good. They did make the, uh, I don't know what you call it, but it's almost like a fastback style, like the, your, your Chevy Fleet Lines, but it's not quite the same. And sometimes those are worth a little bit of money, but really, for the most part, these Plymouths just aren't worth much. They did make a Suburban, a station wagon, a Plymouth Suburban. We've got one of those in here. It's the same body style, but it's obviously a two-door station wagon. And those are sometimes worth a little bit. Speaking of two-door station wagons, right next to it, we have a 1954 Ford. I believe the, yeah, the motor's gone out of this one. I believe this is a ranch wagon is what this is. It was a V8 car. Yeah, it's a ranch wagon. As usual, the quarter panels are rusted gone. They always are on these cars. And I'm guessing, yep, rust down there in the bottom of the fenders. I've, it's very rare to find a 52 to 54 Ford car that doesn't have rust right there and right there. They just rusted really, really bad. Oh, seat's gone. Got a radio in it. Got a few options on this car. I wonder if it had electric seats in it. Surely not, being a ranch wagon, but you just never know. Some of these old Fords out of the early and mid 50s had electric seats in them. It's a pretty cool car. I would think somebody might want to fix that up. I don't know. If nothing else, one of these days we'll drag it out of here and make some wallet out of it. But I'm, I'm pretty confident somebody will buy that car and fix it, just because it's a two door wagon. And last but not least, this is probably, this might be my favorite car in here. I don't know. As far as a, a car that I would drive, I would probably take the Thunderbird over this one. But for a car that was just a really cool and unusual car, this in here probably takes the cake. I think this is a 1958 Oldsmobile. Look at all that chrome. Such a cool, cool car. Unfortunately, it is missing a couple pieces of chrome and that stuff's probably unobtainium. Super hard to find. That's what kills a lot of these old cars like this, is finding parts for them is just so impossible that it actually makes these worth less, even though they're super rare. But it's definitely a cool car, and it's really sad to say, but I think that trunk would probably sell for a lot of money as a couch. 
I'd almost cry if I was the one to cut that up though. That's so cool. Let's check out the inside of it. Oh wow, check out that dash. Super cool. That string all funky. That's kind of neat how it's bent right there in the middle on the string wheel. Huh. Check out that long old glove box on there. Half the dash is a glove box. That's kind of cool. It's even got chrome around the dash. Loops around the side over there. This is somebody's pride and joy back in the day. Oh, there's that piece of chrome that goes over the back window right there. That's definitely a cool thing that that's still there. I bet you somebody would buy this whole car if we got it out. This is probably the worst spot on the whole car is this trunk lid is rotted. You know, all sorts of extra chrome in there. So I bet you all the chrome for this car is here. What's this? Oh, I bet you that's off the bottom of the string column. Huh. Absolutely beautiful car. Lots of style on these things. But like I say, unfortunately, just they're kind of a hard sell. This in here, honestly, would probably wind up going to Europe if I did get it out and advertise it, just because they love these sort of cars over there. Even look at that bumper. That is just so cool, the style on that bumper. I know the engine's gone out of this one as well. There's no engine in it. But uh, actually, it looks like the tires are still halfway holding air. At least some of them are. And that's it. Kind of everything in here. There's some more stuff on these shelves over here, but I was just kind of glancing through it and I really don't see anything super cool or unusual. There's some old hubcaps down here. I don't know what those are. Oh, a set of SS hubcaps. Huh. Those are probably worth a little bit, but honestly, I'm sure they repop those. So those probably honestly aren't worth that much money. I don't know what's up here. Let's see if there's anything in here. No money, just papers. Thought maybe we'd get lucky and hit the jackpot. Some old heaters. Just looks like a bunch of junk and trash is all that's in here. So nothing good there. I'd like to get in here and at least get the Hudson out of here and clean it up and sell it. But this is what I'm up against. I've got trees growing through the ramp. Boy, I tell you what, elm trees have taken off the last few years. I mean, absolutely taken off. There were no elm trees growing in this area right here, through this area, up until about three, maybe four years ago. And then all of a sudden, boom, there was a ton of them, just out of nowhere. Like I said, we've owned this place for 15 years, and for at least 10 years of that, there was just nothing growing in here at all except for grass. So where all these trees came from, I don't know. We did have a really big flood about four years ago, and ever since then is when these trees came in. So I'm wondering if that had something to do with it. But beyond that, I've got this truck and a couple tractors. Those are all just scrap. I'm gonna be crushing those tractors and that truck's definitely just junk. So if I got that out of here, I could come up this ramp and I'd have to have somebody help me. We could go in here and grab that car and kind of pull it out. And I think the best thing to do would be maybe to pull it out here to the edge and strap a car seat or back seat out of a car to my back bumper of my truck and hook up real close to that. And then just kind of pull it out and that way it kind of falls into the the seat on the back of my truck and kind of just guides it out nice and gentle. If this was a little bit heavier duty, I could drive the skid steer in here and then I could just kind of let the car roll down and hold it from the front with a strap, but I don't know if this will hold the skid steer or not. It probably would, but I don't want to break it trying to find out. But we'll save all that for another day. I think that's all for this one. This is just something quick. I haven't filmed anything this week, so I thought, you know, I better film something at least. So I ran in here and did this real quick. This is kind of a fun one. I really enjoy these just kind of exploring, exploration videos. They're kind of fun. There's not a whole lot of work involved, and they're easy to edit, so they're fun for me to film at least. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments which of these cars is your favorite. I've got some big stuff going on later this week, so I'll probably record one more video this week. But beyond that, unless anything else exciting happens, I probably won't record anything else. And with that, I'm going to let you all go. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there and find an adventure. And we'll see you next time. For those of you that like seeing crushed cars, this is what I've been doing all day. I got a whole semi load crushed. I actually have a semi going out east coming tomorrow. Pretty excited for that. I haven't loaded one of those in quite a while. So tomorrow morning, I'll have to come out here and wrap these and load him. Bunch is a good junk. We'll see you next time.